Hello my friends, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So today I wanted to walk you through this game because it got to an extreme late game point with a ton of melting points and I think there were a bunch of interesting decisions and a bunch of neat mistakes made on both sides. So we're going to talk through that game and talk about how it can be played. So right away I feel like I'm at a disadvantage here. My opponent has gotten a choice of my three favorite specialists with all the economic ones and they pick giant and we got my uh, my four least favorite specialists. So I went with Rhino spec because at worst you can sell the Rhino for 300 credits later on. So it's sort of like a delayed quick supply specialist, I guess a slow supply specialist. But we do have what I would consider a pretty strong advantage in terms of unit comp. So we got fangs and phoenixes and my opponent has crawlers steel balls. Phoenixes obviously defeat Crawlers and Steel Balls because nothing in my opponent's army can shoot up. And Fangs 1 to 1 will trade very well into Crawlers as well as distracting Steel Balls should we go for a heavier unit. Um, so we should be in a good spot to win round 1. What I want to mix in here is maybe some Marksmen to clear through the Steel Balls or some Arc Lights to clear through the Crawlers. I choose Arc Lights um, in this case. But my opponent has done something very cool, and they've gone for this extreme overload on one flank because they have such a disadvantaged unit comp. This will maybe let them sort of cheese me out by blowing up a building and take round one. We place our two arc lights in sort of a symmetrical pattern. But these like wide flanked crawlers along with the two marksmen are going to really put a lot of pressure on our building. Luckily, we did place stuff just enough to the right that the crawlers are aggroing to my units instead of to my building. But one other thing that does happen is that this left-hand unit of fangs has split up, and so it's actually losing to the unit of crawlers. Normally, one-to-one, -one, when they're both even levels, a unit of fangs will beat a unit of crawlers, but obviously when you're missing several fangs, it's not going to work. We do, though, just have such a strong unit uh, advantage round one that we win the first round. This isn't such as a big deal for my opponent because they're giant specialists, so they get nothing that helps with round one. We also get nothing that helps with round one as Rhino specialist, but um, things can definitely turn around once their economic advantage kicks in. There, I pick up subsidized Mustangs. I think that subsidized Mustangs is just a really, really good card. Mustangs are a good unit for just about any situation. Um, and so I'm just going to add in two of those. My opponent, being giant specialists, can go for an early Vulcan to counter these, and we will see them do that later on. But uh, for now, just having these puts them under some pressure, can help clear out their crawlers. My opponent goes for the shield drop, and actually perfectly predicts that I'm going for this missile on the right-hand side. So their shield drop, I think I actually was like, oh crap, out loud when, when I saw them place this because their shield drop has just beaten my missile. They also go for replicating crawlers to help them defeat my fangs, um, and they go for this crawler flank on the right-hand side here. Missile gets blocked by the shield, but our mustangs should still help clear out these crawlers pretty quickly. We're going to win the left-hand flank decisively, of course, uh, with a full unit of mustangs and half a unit of fangs against just one crawler unit. They do have this flank that is going to destroy my building here, but we have enough stuff left on the on the board that I don't think there's any chance that they can win this fight. So we are off to a pretty good start, having won the first two rounds. But this is where both of our specialists start to kick in and things can turn around pretty quickly. I need to answer this flanking crawler unit. Uh, here, I'm going to go Tech Specialist. It's early enough that getting Tech Specialist, and my opponent is as well, will add up to a bunch of money over the course of the game, so I think that's generally the pick in that spot. Uh, we also get our free Rhino. I buy an Arc Light to counter these fangs on the side, and then my opponent, as I mentioned earlier, goes for this early Vulcan. We have only mass AoE units, and so... Their, their Vulcan is going to clear through all of my stuff very rapidly and cause me a lot of problems. I do place this Rhino on the wide left-hand side. I could even have gone for a flank with it, but I think it's easier to counter if you do that, rather than just placing it on the side. 
And then later on, we could do something like mobile beacon it around the side so that it intersects the building. But for now, it's just going to cross this flank. I do make a mistake here and buy another unit of Mustangs. I should have predicted that my opponent was going to go for... Buy two more units of Mustangs and, and this Arclight. I should have predicted my opponent would go for this early Vulcan, given that they're giant specialists. So I've invested now very heavily into Mustangs, which aren't um, going to do anything against this Vulcan. Another thing that happens in this game, which is a little embarrassing, is I completely don't notice that my opponent has gone for this left-hand crawler flank. My Mustangs cleared them out for free, and I was like busy watching this side of the map, and so we're going to see that come up a little later when I just have not seen that uh, for this next round. That said, we have enough Phoenixes, and we've cleared through all their stuff that we're getting this, this early edge against their Vulcan. Here, I think we have a pretty interesting choice between Senior Manufacturing Specialist and Subsidized Stormcaller. Stormcallers are very good against Vulcans, they're good against a lot of what my opponent has, but they do suffer against fangs. Um, they suffer against steel balls, just fast units. And so I go for giants of my own. This way I can counter their Vulcan with a fortress. That's a pretty direct counter because you can get the barrier and that stops the, fortress, the Vulcan from doing anything. But my opponent has preemptively countered me by getting a melting point. This melting point is also going to kill my rhino on the side for free, um, unless I get upgrades on, on the Rhino, but we are not going to be able to do that this round. I do get another unit of Phoenixes because I figure my opponent needs stuff that can't shoot up, really, to deal with what I have, uh, so the Phoenixes are going to be good. But my opponent has done something very clever. Let me pause real quick. He's done something very clever and placed these steel balls just in front of their crawlers. And earlier, the way they positioned their crawlers gave them this space this unit slot to do this. If their crawlers had been further up, they wouldn't be able to do this. Now these steel balls are going to tank for the Mustang, tank the Mustang and Arclight fire for my opponent's crawlers, and that's going to let their crawlers get in on my units on the flank here. I also, as I mentioned before, have not noticed these crawlers, so we're going to lose the left-hand flank as well. But let's see how things play out. We kill a couple steel balls, but enough of them survive that all of my opponent's crawlers get in on my stuff. They have replicating crawlers, so they're going to take out everything. And of course, the melting point kills my rhino for free and then just gets to eat all my units on the left-hand flank. So we're now losing because my opponent has, has preemptively countered my stuff with a melting point, like they countered this fortress. Even though the fortress did very well against the Vulcan, it still allows uh, the melting point to get into play. We lost both buildings, so now we are not killing these crawlers quickly enough, and the crawlers are replicating on my fangs. We do still have five phoenixes, uh, which in theory can kill a melting point, but all of my phoenixes are busy shooting these crawlers, which have replicated so much that my opponent is just going to get to torch all of my phoenixes for free with their melting point, while the phoenixes waste their fire. Great play by my opponent coming back, uh, definitely sloppy play by me missing the flank, but uh, I think that steel ball tech on the right hand flank and having placed the crawlers to in a, in a one tile back in the earlier round to enable that steel ball tech, very cool play by my opponent there. Now, here we get a choice between a few options. Range Specialist is going to be very good if we end up in sort of a melting point duel, which we do. Um, Overlord Summoning, I think, can help me win this round if I position the Overlord correctly. Um, but I think Range Specialist might have been the pick there anyways. It does mean that you don't have as much money to do stuff with, but it's still very valuable um, in these sort of unit duels. Let's see how things play out, though. I have a few unit levels that I should probably be getting. I, it looks like I don't actually get those this round. I buy a melting point to counter my opponent's melting point. My opponent levels these crawlers, so they're going to cause even more trouble. Um, and I am going to have to decide where to place my overlord. They also get a melting point to counter this fortress, so that's a nice direct counter. This, I think, was definitely an error by me, placing this overlord here. 
it's now going to take aggro from these two marksmen. If I had placed it further back over here, then it would be shooting at my opponent's uh, giants while not taking aggro from the marksman. The marksman would be shooting the fang instead of the overlord. So, so bad placement by there, but by me there. I also continue to do nothing about this left hand flank. I do buy a unit of fangs here, which I think makes a lot of sense because it distracts their melting point, but now my rhino is still just getting out ahead of the fangs and getting blown up by the melting point. Things going well on, on these flanks, we clear through their stuff. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention is I got a missile just to deal with this uh, flank, then we can ignore what they have. But because I didn't deal with the left hand flank, my opponent's crawlers overwhelmed my fangs, replicated a ton, and their melting point eventually got on my melting point, so we're losing this round yet again. Uh, we just don't have enough stuff to clear through these crawlers. My mustangs are very ineffectually shooting my opponent's shield, which has been up for like six rounds at this point. And the, uh, the phoenixes are just getting killed while shooting crawlers again. So now I think we're in actually a lot of trouble. We're pretty far down tempo. My opponent has two pretty direct unit counters. And this reinforcement, I think, is where we need to get back in. I pick Amplifying Core with the intention of placing it on a melting point. If I can get enough melting points to counter my opponent's melting points, then maybe we can get back into this. Their Photon Blast makes sense. Um, this time, I do finally decide to counter these crawlers. I use a missile. I should probably just be using a unit of Mustangs on this side, although they could then do the same thing with the Steel Balls. But I just go with a missile on each side, and that, that will counter the two flanks very well. Over here, I get a melting point to target their giants. And we don't want to get chaff on this side because their Vulcan would just clear it. So while normally I could place a fang over here to tank the melting point shots, the Vulcan will just clear the chaff. My opponent, very smartly, I think, goes a unit of crawlers here and a unit of crawlers here. That's going to tank both of my melting points. But because we do have the amplifying core on, uh, on our fortress, it will tank a little bit longer and also maybe blow up the Vulcan. I could also have considered putting it on the melting point. I think that might have been better. But these two missiles at least will deal with the flanking units. My opponent's uh, Photon Blast here, really strong, gonna keep their units alive for much longer, and that will make these units get in on my Mustangs. We do have this level two arc light, which should still be enough to do clear most of those crawlers, but because of the, the photon blast that they have on that side, the crawlers do still get in on my building and destroy it. Luckily, we were able to use this Vulcan to clear their chaff, and then our melting point targeted their melting point on this side quickly enough that the building getting lost didn't come up during that left-hand engagement. But we do now have to beat a level two melting point with a level one melting point. We have a lot of chaff, but another issue that I'm having is because I bought range on my Mustangs. My Mustangs are actually slightly longer range than my melting points, which means that this melting point is walking out ahead of the Mustangs and tanking the laser instead of the Mustangs tanking the laser. So their level two melting point gets to target mine, my level one, and destroy it. We actually lose that fight despite having completely annihilated them on the left hand flank. Now we are definitely in trouble. Here we have a couple options. We could go Barrier or Assault Melting Point. In this case, I think my opponent made a mistake. They picked the Barrier, we picked Assault Melting Point to give us an advantage in the Melting Point versus Melting Point duel that this game is definitely coming down to, and we buy range on our Melting Points. I also buy a, a Vulcan to clear chaff in the center here. This will let this melting point target their giants quicker. And my opponent is going to, instead of having upgraded melting points, uh, play have a shield. But in these melting point duels, the shield won't do very much because melting points kill the barrier very, very quickly. 
My opponent goes for a Vulcan, which makes total sense. I also place this missile on my back building because I'm still losing this right hand flank and I wanted this missile to clear these crawlers before they got in on the building. But I think this was uh, a bad placement. This missile is too far forward and is now going to hit these steel balls instead of hitting the crawlers. If I place the missile further back, it will hit crawlers instead of hitting the, the steel balls, which are just not doing anything in this fight anyways. We do again go with missiles on both flanks though to keep things going. This Vulcan with the barrier I think is a mistake by my opponent um, because they, as I mentioned, the melting point will clear it. I also make what I think is a pretty good decision here and get field recovery, sell this Rhino. The Rhino is not doing anything because it's just getting cleared by the melting point almost instantly and that's 300 credits that I get back which allows me to get a third melting point this round and place it so that it is going to help clear through these shields that my opponent is playing. This barrier is good in that it's clearing my opponent, in that it's um, blocking my Vulcan, but the Vulcan is still going to clear at least some of those crawlers because uh, the crawlers will obviously move forward into melee and get out of range of the shield. And on this side, we have our melting points. Our melting points have range, so they're targeting my opponent's stuff before they can be targeted. We do have a level 3 melting point facing all of this stuff, but now that I have range, my Mustangs are going to get out ahead of my melting points. So even though this one will probably die, this one will uh, be covered by the chaff. And this one melting point, even at level 3, will eventually get taken down by my level 1 melting point. Something that you should always be thinking about during these games is the interactions of the ranges of your units. With range on both of them, my Mustangs are out ahead, which is what I want. With range on only the Mustangs, the melting points were out ahead and getting killed. My opponent goes for Vulcan's Descent here. Uh, I think that makes sense. They still need more ways to clear my chaff. Um, they've also upgraded their Vulcans with the Incendiary Bomb, so you get a little more uh, value from that. I go with Underground Threat mostly because it's cheap, but also because I want something over here to just provide chaff against this level 3 melting point. I think that's the biggest pain point in our game currently. And what else can I do uh, in, in this round to try to make sure that we win it? Well, I think the best thing that we can do here, honestly, is just get more melting points. We have some Vulcans clearing chaff, having more melting points to break this shield, break this barrier, and fight my opponent's melting points is really good. So let's see how that works out for me. I'm also placing, uh, continuing to place missiles on these flanks. It's basically taxing me 100 credits every round to deal with these flanking units. My opponent has gone for this backline Vulcan, which I think is going to be very strong for them. It will clear through their Mustang, clear through these Mustangs. And they've gone for a shield drop here. The shield drop shouldn't matter that much. It, I think, maybe should have been slightly further left and forward where the it would take the Vulcan fire, because right now the Vulcan is still clearing all this stuff. I upgrade shields on my fortress to tank the uh, my opponent's Vulcan Fire and the Incendiary Missiles, that will keep my Chaff alive just a little bit longer. And then uh, the other thing that I am going to do this round that I think is pretty good is just upgrade a bunch of units. Um, when we get this level 3 arc light, it will now deal with basically this whole flank all by itself. I also do place this missile back here in the correct position, like we talked about just a little earlier. But my opponent has one more very cool trick in store. They go for this hacker, buy the hacker, and get enhanced control on the hacker. And this means that if they can get the hacker to target the melting point and then kill it, they're going to get a full health level 2 melting point basically for free. Their Vulcan is going to blow up my side objective. Um, and then I'm going to have to fight face their level 3 and level 2 melting point. They also do buy range on their melting points. I think they should have done that much, much earlier. But right now, at least, my melting point is targeting theirs, and their hacker didn't quite target it in time, so it blew up. If that hacker had managed to hack the second melting point, that would have been a huge problem for me. Both the buildings dying is obviously not great for me, but... 
uh, we kill their building at exactly the right time as well, so we are sort of even on paralysis. And then I've got my melting points targeting, I guess that was mine, but um, targeting what is now their melting point. And we just eke out a win because their level 3 melting point is busy targeting my chaff. So really cool tech by my opponent on the last round. It almost worked for them. And I thought that was a very interesting game with a ton of cool melting point duels. So obviously my main mistake was ignoring the left hand flank. I think my opponent's main mistake was not getting range on their melting points earlier. It let me win those melting point duels. I also think that not buying assault melting point assault melting point was a mistake for them uh, on the turn when that was a specialist that was offered because they could then they start losing these melting point duels with just the 75 more 75 percent more health on each melting point and it also means that basically the only thing that kills my melting points is a melting point so i think overall uh, really strong play from my opponent definitely some some sloppy plays from me and i wanted to uh, showcase that game just in terms of how melting point duels in the late game go. Vulcan melting point is just a very powerful combination in the late game. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, my friends. As always, um, you know, let me know what you would have done differently or what you think my opponent should have done differently in the comments below. And uh, you can subscribe to the channel. I have been streaming this game and posting near daily videos of this and other strategy games. Cheers, folks. GG.